<laughs> after after all these years and uh, mm. you know after Chung Chang Wall's term ended in 2021 we did see the appointment of uh, Ma Xing Rei um, who I guess is more of a technocrat than a uh, mm. uh, concentration uh, camp <laughs> organizer uh, he was uh, the previous uh, provincial secretary in uh, Guangdong uh, even his surname is Ma, which I guess might hint at uh, the fact he might come from a Muslim family. Obviously, if he's a party member, then religion plays no issue. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just guessing here because Ma would uh, uh, be one of the uh, more common Muslim names uh, uh, of uh, Chinese, for example, of Hui Chinese, probably referencing uh, Mohammed. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, I think, uh, you know, under his uh, term, it's kind of gone, uh, gone down. It seems like the government is uh, maybe at, at one point, either Chen Shang Wu might have, uh, you know, seen some backlash or the government might have told him, you know, no, it's, it's probably been enough around 2018, you know, slowly kind of bring it down. Yeah. And we see that uh, Chen Cheng Wu has uh, not, uh, you know, risen to the top party hierarchy. He was not uh, he appointed uh, into uh, the standing committee of the Politburo. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it seems like, you know, they're kind of, uh, the government uh, in Beijing would kind of, you know, like to quietly put him uh, away, you know, to and hope the entire world will forget what happened uh, maybe trying to fade it away yeah you know kind of quietly just stop talking about it like covid yeah forget something happened well it does, doesn't quite work that way you know, because uh, people have evidence um and uh yeah so it has uh, created a lot of problems and uh, you know a lot of uh, scars uh, between the uh, um, Chinese population, the Han Chinese population, and uh, the Uyghur population, and the other uh, minorities who are living in Xinjiang. So it's you know this will be very painful in the future. And uh, yes, yes. You know, I mean we we can only guess you know what's uh, what's uh, going to happen. Um, like I said, there are calls for independence uh, from Xinjiang. Not maybe they are not quite as centralized uh, around a central figure uh, like around the Dalai Lama in uh, Tibet. But there have been some uh, some figures like Rabia Kadir and others, you know, who have sort of represented uh, um, this movement. So mm. we will we will have to see. Um, there are uh, you know, there are about forty five percent of uh, Uyghurs living in uh, Xinjiang. There are about forty three percent of uh, Han Chinese living there. So it's uh, mm. very mixed in this respect. So we will mm. have to see whether you know what kind of an arrangement uh, they can come to sometime in the far future. Mm -hmm. um, one can only hope, you know, that uh, if the regime changes in China, that uh, these uh, provinces on the outskirts like Tibet or uh, Xinjiang, they will not uh, end up like the other uh, Central Asian countries after the collapse of the Soviet Union, which would become quasi-dictatorships uh, or dictatorships, or even uh, worse, if you look at the at the case in Chechnya, which would be a dictatorship simply because uh, uh, the government in Kremlin would be able to find one person that uh, uh, would be able to uh, control the area, would be given free reign in the area if uh, they uh, stay loyal to Moscow. Hmm. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, yeah, I and they will find somebody, of course. I mean, I, I'm. <laughs> this is what I, what I'm a little worried about. You know that uh, the government in Beijing they will try to, you know, have some influence in in these areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What what I worry about and what makes no sense to me is, for example, when we talk about the genocide how the all the all the all the countries actually they uh, 
they they care about the situation in China. They care about the the the the, the plights of the of of the Uyghurs. And but when it comes to sanctioning, they will they sanction only only the companies that uh, I mean collaborate. Uh, on the genocide so in Xinjiang, uh, received some products, uh, maybe uh, in many cases cotton, yeah, um, which would yeah. be processed by the prisoners. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are companies like uh, Nike, Adidas, BMW, H&M, Samsung, yeah. uh, Puma, Apple, Esprit, even uh, Tesla, and so on. But why are we going to distinguish this is one country this is china why are they distinguishing china uh, xinjiang from the rest of china they are saying okay yeah. we are sanctioning on the products for this region imagine that hitler is having three concentration camps somewhere let's say in the north let's, and let's just say, sanction uh treblinka or maidanek or just the the, the <laughs> polish uh, general governor Government. Just this region and these concentration camps are located, but the rest of Germany, not Germany, is fine. We can do business with them as normal. Does it make any sense? Is it kind of like an excuse, like, a, oh yeah, yeah, we are not over, overlooking this problem and we care about it genuinely because we are good people, but, you know, the rest of China is fine. Just this part of China is bad, the rest of China is good. I mean, isn't the Chinese government sitting in Beijing? Isn't the evil that is orchestrating this terrible, awful genocide that we will, or our our our, our children and grandchildren and grandchildren will learn about? Uh, and they, they just written, embedded in the history of humankind as something terrible and horrible. And, uh, and these people who orchestrated this terrible genocide are sitting in Beijing but they are fine. Just this region, actually the people who have maybe nothing to do with the genocide, maybe they are really the Uyghurs that could actually make some living out of it. We are yeah. punishing these people. They are maybe just running a normal cotton field just because this cotton comes from this region. Does it make any sense? It's a good point, yeah. And yeah. uh, on the one hand, I can understand the logic, you know, trying to punish uh, those who are responsible. But again, you know, this is also, there is fear from the governments like, nah, you know, we, we, we want to stay friends with China and so on. Yes, but uh, you, you cannot excuse the uh, top, yeah, top really, leadership yeah, because they top are, top uh, at yeah. the end of the day, they, you know, um, they are in charge. Um, with what's going yeah. on in the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another case, just I remember that uh, if anybody wants to learn more uh, particular cases, internet, yeah. YouTube, full of these cases, there are... There Interviews, are, it's well documented. Women giving testimonies, what they experienced, and they were saved because their husband was from Egypt, or their husband oh. was from Kazakhstan. Oh, okay. And then, after several mm -hmm. years, uh, with these people, we are uh, we are incarcerated without being charged of anything, you know. Because in China, you can get to prison and and wait for years till any charges are pressed against you. So, and these women were saved because their husbands were pressing their own government in Kazakhstan or I Egypt. Understand. Yeah. To arrive the and they saved. Uh, on the woman was. It, a woman who marries Egyptian man traveled with her triplets to China and was was uh, arrested and after one year eventually they showed her the children but there were only two what and she was a very the third yeah she, the third one is having a surgery what happened nobody told her anything zero and the, the third child died and when eventually six months later her husband arrived with some egyptian diplomats and uh, they were oh, here are your two children but it was like but i had three children that arrived with my wife went, no no no no no your wife arrived only with two of them you know and here they are lying deflecting 
and you know so eventually he managed to get her out and they arrived in in egypt and the egypt government said oh after after they they have to sign a paper that she will return back to china in three months and even they arrived at the airport and they said no no no this woman stays and the husband started shouting and eventually they allowed them to get on the plane after they arrived in egypt just many stories like this arrived in egypt they said the egyptian government said no this your wife must go back to china eventually she ran to the american embassy and the americans gave her, gave her a status of, of a refugee and Stand. managed to get her, her children to america america the country that even if you listen to these stories and there are some muslims and they are genuinely appalled you know about this event they said america is bad america is really bad but china is a different level so even these people and they are american they say oh this is bad but china eventually they like oh, china is a different yeah china is different level. it's no i mean china is this the evil america is not trying to wipe the people out because of their of their of their religion affiliation or or you know america is fighting war for any other reason than religion or assimilation or or why or wiping out the the, the whole ethnicity yeah it's a, there's a difference yes yeah, that's a big difference so what, what what is this video? Well, let's uh, let's take a look. This is uh, um, an interview with uh, one of the detainees who survived the camp experiences, and this is just an illustration of what uh, the experiences of some people who might have been uh, incarcerated has uh, been like. Let's take a look. Um, so besides all this what's going on uh, at nights they started to take us or questioning or I don't know what are the reasons uh, young girls were taken by the unfamiliar faces of some Chinese men in black suits they come and they're not the regular police there and called some ladies by name and they take them out some never comes back some comes back as losing their conscious uh, some they lose their mind some are like very heavy bleeding so uh, I, I thought they were being tortured and one day they also called me and another young lady mm -hmm. One day the police called me and another Uyghur girl who is only 21 years old who's unmarried she was so beautiful we both were called to the dark room Kim <laughs> I witnessed her uh, being raped in front of my eyes. She was screaming and begging. And after that, she was like lost her conscience. She wasn't herself. She cried every day. And it's very hard to handle. Don't want to talk about the details. Uh, even when she was released uh, multiple times, she was called by the Chinese uh, government officials for their the alcohol night parties she had to go and multiple times she contacted me to help her but uh, there was nothing I could do <laughs>
Oksaslı. Ben bu sonu uçturdum. Lakin ben hayatımda bırak ölüp buldum. İşte mi kere gelmesin. Ben lagırdım çıkıp lan. Öldür oğlum ben özenim diyen. Allah'ın kudur tövlen benim yol düşüm. Kazakistan tuvalı için. Ben kuvalı. Beginim bilmeydim. I too actually went through the same fate with her. That I was also cold at night and went through what she went through. しかも温泉。温泉県在ボガンドミニ。ドヨスチクセシナヨルトシャンカザフスタンディケダパシタカワルキャルデマエシャンメイメダピシキジャスオノシテウズビルギンチャソトラパシタクルド。ウルキンド
No, but this is no, this is they, at some point, you know, this uh, is going to uh, this going to come. Yeah. Example, example, one example. Why, why this is true, and why the Chinese government is evil, evil, maybe the biggest evil in the world. Not even one case. They didn't find even one case worth of investigating. Not even one person been punished. Is it possible that you incarcerate one million people? There's not going to be any any. Uh, to be any abuse of power going on no it's not, not even one case i mean somebody somebody will complain and normally they should launch an investigation this is how it works yes. not even one case of abuse was confirmed by the chinese government so i think this is the best proof to say the chinese government is lying and really what we are experiencing right now in our lifetime is ongoing genocide on one ethnic minority. Why? Because some of their people committed some terrorist attacks. We have to punish the whole, whole, whole nation. I mean, I can, I can only hope that really that uh, both of the people, the people have been released by now and those that have not been released will be released from prison soon and that there will be some compensation to these uh, people for these atrocities because there should be my prediction but, is uh, no, it will not it's, um, my prediction is it will never ever happen just like the people they were arrested the students the young people at Tiananmen Square they are still in prison they are still rotting yeah. in in Chinese prisons yeah, a lot, a lot of, Just a lot of activists uh, in China. Yeah, they, they are still um, locked yeah. up somewhere. Yeah. So my prediction is nothing will happen. We just go on unless China will commit. I mean, China will make a big mistake. Just like Russia attacking Ukraine. If China attacks Taiwan, maybe then something will happen. But until then, nothing will happen. So these people are on their own. Nobody will help them. Nobody will help them. They are doomed. Fifty percent of Somebody young women who are capable of bearing a child were already sterilized. And uh, prediction is like one hundred thousand people were murdered, and other people were brainwashed, and they were mentally mentally uh, harmed through the drugs or through the brainwashing and other things uh, this these people are basically ruined 10 percent to 20 percent of the yes i mean how do I, you know how do you go on uh, <laughs> living like this it's no. A lot. no no this is not an isolated experience unfortunately a lot of people have these kinds of horrible experiences of uh, being locked up you know for for nothing yeah, i mean you know what what uh, what uh, did you learn from that nothing at all yeah well, thank you that we could talk about that today because i think it's very very important that maybe nothing is more important than what is happening these days in xinjiang yeah i think so this this and this they... this is the the worst thing that uh, is happening in china yeah yeah the worst one yeah. absolutely well, definitely. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that you brought this up. So. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing lots of lots of insights into into this problem. And you know, I'm. I think the more and more people, more and more people realize what, what is really happening, and uh, maybe some really precautions, some precautions, and some some real, real steps will be done, and to to force China to stop killing their own people. Yeah. If the Chinese yeah. government, you know, claims that how <laughs> much they love the people and how they do everything for the people, well, then please, you know, do that. Yeah, please show it. Yeah, show it. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, well, uh, yeah. Thanks for talking about this, Trabant, and 
let's see what we can uh, talk about next time. Yeah, thank you, Tito. Yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot. Take care. Yeah. You know, stay safe. Yeah, you too. Don't and you don't too. end up uh, in a hole somewhere in the desert. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. Well, take care. Yeah, you, you too. too. You bye too. Bye bye. bye.